GPN Data, please? Uh, GPN Data is a payment service provider. Uh, we have operate and own our own gateway. Uh, we uh, only deal with uh, card not present environment. We do not do point of sale. Uh, so we're exclusively on uh, basically internet purchasing. And uh, we've been focusing on that for the nearly 10 years that we've been in existence. And it's been a, a good business for us. And we think we've made an impact and we're trying to make more of an impact. Now, 10 years in that, you know, that line of work, you must have seen quite a bit of change. Um, you know, what would have been the biggest impact you've seen in the most recent years? We initially, in our early days, focused on what we called the high-risk business. Uh, but several years ago, we decided to change the terminology because card not present is all risky. You know, you, you don't have the, the card holder's face in front of the merchant. The merchant doesn't see the physical card. So it's a risk. It always is. And it just matters how you control the risk. And so we changed our focus to work with merchants uh, to help them be better enabled to control the risk that they were exposed to and then represent them properly with the banks whenever the disputes were filed. And that became our niche. Everyone always looks for a niche and ours was to uh, make better merchants out of merchants, uh, better in the terms of how they handle the transactions and expose themselves and so forth. Uh, and then to protect the merchants when uh, uh, things of fraudulent nature they're subject to. The criminal fraud is not as big in the, the merchant range that we deal with. Uh, criminals only deal with fraud where they can make money. And it's kind of hard to make money for uh, some face cream product or for uh, uh, small uh, internet purchases, you know, uh, handmade uh, woolen scarves and so forth. How are you going to turn that into money? Now, there is uh, criminal fraud on card not present and like the travel industry because they can either sell or use the tickets elsewhere. Uh, there is criminal fraud in uh, telephones and, and uh, cards for the phones, uh, uh, even uh, the iTunes cards. There's criminal fraud available on all of those because they can convert that into money. Uh, it's kind of hard to, they can do some things of, uh, like order a Rolex watch and have it shipped to the house, but that's only if they've actually, they, they monitor the house to see that it's going to arrive when no one's home so they can pick it up, uh, that type of thing. So it, criminal fraud's not as, as big an impact in our industry. It's what's called friendly fraud, uh, otherwise known as buyer's remorse. I ordered something from the internet and uh, my friend told me he did the same thing and he just called a bank and said, hey, that wasn't me. And that's criminal, that's friendly fraud. And it's a, it's a bad name. And the merchant doesn't care whether it's a criminal or a, someone who, you know, sorry mate, didn't really mean to offend you, but I'm gonna take your money. You know, I mean, that's, so there's, there's no difference to the merchant on the fraud. Uh, so that's what we've been focusing on. Well, I mean, the early bird gets the worm, and it sounded like you really found it a niche there, effectively. Well, it was, to, it, we found it by accident. Otherwise, we were constantly defending our merchants, and then we kept looking for when we failed, why did we fail, and then we used that to our advantage to change our procedures and, and our processes and, and uh, to make every merchant to be able to stand on his own. Some merchants, uh, smaller merchants especially, don't understand when they make some claim on their website of lifetime guarantee. Well, our, our underwriting department tells them you have two choices. You can either remove that, or you can provide the document from some third party company that you're paying some money to that will handle that lifetime guarantee after you're, you've gone out of business. Because the, the buyer sees lifetime guarantee and he expects that. And so it's to make sure that the merchant doesn't make claims that the buyer is deceived and, and thinks he's going to get something he's not going to get. Uh, a merchant may say he's representing Microsoft or Hewlett Packard or something. We say, no problem, let me see the contract that you have the legal relationship that you're representing. Well, we kind of, okay, then take it off your website. 
and so it's to make sure that you know they should be able to sell anything. They, you can you know, they're going to make some claims that yeah, maybe a little touchy is you know guaranteed weight loss. Well, don't say guaranteed. And other people who have used this product have exhibited. It's fine, but to say guaranteed, no, you can't do that. And so we just make them more honest, and and then it becomes uh, we will push them pretty heavy, but at the same time we will defend them just as heavy when someone uh, tries to use friendly fraud to take their money. It sounds like you're, you're helping out a whole range of different people. You know, well, it's, the it's a big market, okay? I mean, there's you have no idea of the hundreds of thousands of websites that pop up. People have an idea, a concept, and they've, they've licensed uh, or maybe even gotten a freebie software package to develop their website, and now they want to sell products, and they just need to be able to collect money, have some way of transferring the money. And it doesn't mean that they're necessarily uh, bad people, it just means that they're, they're not used to the uh, things that are different between a brick and mortar establishment and the internet, and we have to educate them. So what are you showcasing in uh, at MPE in particular then? Uh, probably the, the, the focus that we have as a, as a PSP on on uh, risk management. Uh, I'm actually doing a talk tomorrow morning uh, and the focus of that is that risk management is not something that you can go out and buy and add on. That it has to be thoroughly entwined in everything you do. Uh, not to give away anything, but I start out explaining why uh, we thoroughly vet the merchant. We, by the time we get done, we know more things about that merchant than, than their mother knew. And so that we understand the merchant and understand their business model so that we can appropriately set them up with the right acquiring bank and set up with a, 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 a merchant agreement that they can live with and we can live with and our acquiring banks can live with and that meets all of the Visa, MasterCard, uh, the card schemes, different regulations. Uh, so I think we do that uh, better than anybody else. Uh, we take that all the way to the very end, long after the purchase, when maybe four months later they get a dispute from the cardholder that could turn into a chargeback, that I will match our record of representing and winning chargebacks for our merchants to anybody at this event or any other event I've ever been to. Because we don't give up, you know, because we, we made that merchant defensible, so we will defend them to the very end. You know, there's a lot of regulation coming in and affecting all manner of things within the industry. You know, how is it impacting you and how are you, are you going to excel from that? Probably there are two, two significant things uh, to date right now. Number one is the change that Visa made announced last October that went into effect, or at, it went into effect October 15th. They announced it earlier uh, that uh, had to do with cross-border merchants and how they were handled. And again, I think we prepared well for it. And uh, so we have, that's one of the reasons we added the different locations. Uh, so that's a significant item. Uh, it's been a game changer and everyone is still kind of wait and see and playing around and talking to Visa and, and even, even MasterCard was blown away by it. I talked to people in MasterCard uh, a week after it went into effect. I was at a MasterCard event and they said, they had no clue this was coming. So this, they're going to wait and see what's going on. Uh, that's number one. Number two is PSD2. Uh, here last year, there was a lot of discussion about PSD2, and there were a lot of, of people involved in PSD2 that admitted that things weren't going according to plan. And all of a sudden, they were making adjustments. So I'm, I'm looking to hear what the adjustments are. Uh, you can't just keep clamping down and pushing something from one place to another. Uh, it takes it, it costs to do business, and you can't sit there and say, "Well, we're going to eliminate the cost of doing business." That's not <laughs> that's not possible. Uh, if uh, so, we'll, it's a wait and see on PSD2. And again, I. Uh, we like to talk to people from the different councils, uh, uh, be it Visa, MasterCard, uh, the, uh, the whole group from PSD2, uh, the uh, 
payment card industry, PCI DSS, we get involved with them to exchange ideas because a lot of times they have good intentions and they'll say, this is what we're going to do. And we go, one more thing you didn't take into consideration. And they go, oh, so, so the idea is to try and make them aware before things are carved in stone. And then, oh, now we have to, okay, see how it's gonna fall. So those, those are the items that we're concerned with. And then MPE is a great location to do that. Speaking of MPE, how have you found it so far? Oh, it's been, it's been very good for us. Uh, we brought a, a sizable contingent this year. And one of the things that we try and do is uh, we schedule, had a schedule we put together to make sure we had each of our people attending the different sessions. We didn't want to wind up with everyone in one session and then skipping something else that maybe turn out later, oh gosh, we should have been there. And so we made sure every session is covered. Uh, they are also from our various offices, so to spread the experience of what's going on rather than it all be focused on headquarters and then us try and tell the offices they need to see it firsthand. Uh, and since the uh, Offices are somewhat independent. They need to make and develop relationships with people from banks and other processors and, and uh, uh, other people that support MPE. And so it's good for them all the way around. It's been good.